the fact of the homeless problem has gotten worse, and especially in our community. And where do you think, now you notice we see a lot of the same preachers on social media. Now, we're not seeing really in abundance, as you know, in America, there's a church on every corner. Correct. Now, you have not seen these local ministers and preachers in these congregations step up to take to, to help the community like they used to. They used to be there for the community in general, for whatever their needs were, whether they're baptizing them, burying them, marrying them, or christianing them, and all this stuff. But you're not seeing that now is it because you think because people i live in canada i don't see anybody going to churches i'm being honest i don't and i live right next door to one of the biggest churches here in canada and i don't see nobody standing outside i don't see nobody going in there i don't see nothing happening in that church going to these churches so what do you think is is the problem i believe that the problem has social media has been the problem because you have these i was just looking at Kirk Franklin on stage bumping and grinding to uh, some song. They're like, what is Kirk Franklin doing up here on stage? You know, but that's the that's the appropriation with the culture. You know, we have to look at where we come from 20, 30, 40 years ago when you went to church a certain type of way. I really believe that they kind of ran with the come as you are. And um and and it and that doesn't mean how you dress, it means how you are as a person internally. And I believe that a lot of that has become publicized. I also don't, I personally don't go to church. Um, the last time that I went to church, which I was born Christian Pentecostal, um, well, raised Christian Pentecostal. Um, I was born a human. But, <laughs> um, but I, I the last time that I went to church, it was on a Valentine's Day, and I went with my grandmother. And um, the pastor stood in front of this huge congregation, and he said, we're getting ready to have our um, Valentine's Day dinner. But just understand, in this church, a relationship, we consider a relationship between a man and a woman. And I, I sat there to myself, and I said, why would this leader stand on this pulpit and make that kind of statement. What gives him the validity or the gall to talk about anyone and who they love or how they love? So you know how when you exit out the church, you have they're, they're at the door to shake your hand or whatever. I mm -hmm. kept my hands in my goddamn pockets and I walked right out the door. As soon as my grandma, we got to the car, my grandma was like, yeah, she, what she said, she was like, now that was rude. I said, you right, that was rude because he didn't have to stand up there and say that. You're, you're demonizing of people. I'm, I bleed blood like you bleed blood. You up there breathing the same AC air in here. I'm breathing. Ain't nothing different between you and I besides you're standing up there and the way that you're standing up there and having a conversation and telling a story. I can sit up there and have a conversation and tell a story as well. And I guarantee you it will come more so from a place of love. Another reason why I don't go to church is because once I started reading, I've been on my spiritual journey now for probably about Close to 10 years when I actually started looking into other things that are out there in terms of from a spiritual standpoint. And mm -hmm. I was read and I read a lot of self-help and personal development and business books. That's that's what I like to read. And I was reading this one book and it said how a church is a nonprofit organization. As you mentioned, why isn't the church, why aren't they out in the field and doing these types of things? If you're a nonprofit or from a business perspective, if you're a nonprofit organization, you should have people in place to find the grant money that is necessary for you to be doing those things, for you to pour back into your community. There's no reason why we got a building fund when it's a building grant that's available. All you have to do is write the grant, be in the area that is specified for qualify for the grant, have your taxes paid up and up to date as a nonprofit organization. And there's no reason why you can't 
pull from the money that's being given to you instead of taking from the money that's coming in. You have, I remember one time my grandmother um, went to her pastor and, and asked, and it was a big congregation. And she was like, hey, I need help with, with, with something. And they were like, oh, well, we can't do it, but you can take 10%, I can give you 10%. I can give this institution 10%. And then out of that 10%, the person that's leading this institution is taking that 10%. Another another thing is Joel Olstein just being here in Houston, Texas. Like I had no idea when the whole Katrina thing happened and everything stuff like that. I I heard of it, but it wasn't until I'm actually traveling on 59 and I'm like, oh, it's a big ass church. Like, mm -hmm. and we couldn't allow those people to come in there. But it, as you mentioned, not only a church on every corner, but also a church on every Sunday, whether it's on social media or whether it's actually on TV here in Houston, he's on TV every Sunday. So I, I look at situations like that to where I but it's it's a unfortunately it's not a what is it the shepherd and the flock or the, the fleece what it's not that type of environment in the church anymore. It's a monetary opportunity. Not only is it a monetary opportunity, but it's a way to continue to, to, to spew out hate. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some great pastors out there that's preaching good stuff and da 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 this and the third. But in the community where I live at, I live in Magnolia, Texas, population 3,000. Everybody know everybody. Everybody this. When you see one of us, it's like, oh, you... We out here? Like, it, it's, that type, <laughs> it's that type of experience. I literally have had that at work. Like, so they'll come, is it Black people that live out here? Like, it's, it's those times because you don't expect it. However, at the same time, you can always tell, I just went to, like, a goddamn Trump-supported um, bar the other day. And as I'm going in, me going in with my coworker, and here I am, black gay male. There she is, um, Hispanic lady. And we walking into a, a red bar. And I was like, okay, well, it's time to go ahead and disrupt the matrix. I don't know what they thought was going on, but we just came here to, you know, have drinks and food. And we wound up having a really, really great time. But at the same time, I'm not going to pretend like I didn't feel like there were eyes that were on me because I'm me and my skin in that space. And even when I'm sitting down and I'm like, oh, well, you know, do, don't y'all have wine down Wednesday? Yeah, but it's more so for the white people that come out here. I was like, oh, y'all have charcuterie? She was like, yeah, but it's like more for like white people. I'm like, give me the charcuterie, give me the bottle of wine, give me a shot of Patron and give me a margarita, give me my, give me my wings. You know, you know, it's funny that you say that. There's so many things I could talk about being on social media and about how I see us as Black people and how we've stuck to a lot of the same traditions that we've grown up with. Now, these traditions that we've grown up with, even though we've instilled them in a lot of our children and a lot of our other family members, or, you know, our middle siblings and some of the older ones that might not have caught on quite quickly. Now, the for me, I, I, I find that there is a real, none of that seems to matter now to the young people. None of that. None of those educational values that your grandmother and your great-grandmother put on you. You see some of the older ones and middle ones trying to do skits and stuff on social media to show you how they grew up with discipline, and what they've learned from their older, um, from their parents about saving money, how to find a job. And the young people don't seem to have a clue which direction to go in to be successful. Because back when me and you were growing up, we didn't have this huge um, social media platform. Now that the young Black people or I, I'm saying that because it's it's what concerns me the most. Right. Seeing our young black people not taking advantage of this huge opportunity in front of them. I believe that that just has a lot to do with the saying how 
they would be like, oh, well, let the streets raise them or the streets raise them. And that's where a lot of us knew more than what we needed to know because we were outside playing. Now, we're, they don't go outside and play anymore. Everything is right here in this phone. So we can't monitor what shows up. You can be on a site trying to bootleg, watch a movie for free, but before that bootleg movie pop up is going to be some type of pornography that's just automatically going to pop up there without you even knowing it. And this is your child. This is your youth. And then also you have to look at it in, in our time period. Everybody listen to the same radio station, 102 Jams, 94.5. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so everybody watch the same cartoons, WB. That's what came on Saturday morning. Like, we, <laughs> we, right, right. We, we all <laughs> grew up watching and doing the same thing. And now we have more of a, a culture to where whatever you want, whatever you're into, whatever you're interested in, even if you're not interested in, we're always being targeted by advertisement and by marketing. And you have to look at it from the perspective of what are you really interested in? When I say you have to watch the things that you speak and what you say, because these phones hear and pick up on everything that, that the conversation mm -hmm. is going on. So you'd be like, oh yeah, I want to keep talking from Banana Republic. Next thing you know, you get Banana Republic shit coming in your email or to your phone or the spam and you know mm -hmm. it, it's 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 circularized targeted marketing that's what's going on and that leads into our youth it's circularized targeted marketing for different demographics for different areas not if i'm in an area to where the property that i live on and work on this is the first development here in the past 15 years they haven't built no no apartment complexes over here in the past 15 years. Not only that, but now we have HEB. They're building Ross, Marshall, Brunson, PGM. Like you should see the residents' response online, like on Facebook. Oh, why are you bringing an apartment complex here? You bring it. You're just bringing in the trash. Probably gonna be some low income and and da 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 and this that, and the third. I'm like, but y'all out here on acres of land living in trailer parks. Like what? What did y'all don't take out? You don't want to pay a trash fee because you used to burning your trash out in the in the field. Like at a certain point in time, you have to elevate with the times. The number one thing that people are going to spend their money on is convenience. The number one thing that rich people spend their money on is convenience. And a lot of times it's about what's convenient and convenience on both sides. There was actually a video um the other day with this, this this young black kid that was breaking into this guy's house and he had a gun the the young boy had a gun and the old guy came out and he had his shotgun and he just had a conversation with him and he was like this ain't what you do we don't have to do this you want to make some money okay let's talk about making money put your gun down okay we let's go i'm not gonna call the police now let's go in the house and sit down let's have a conversation about what's going on when you're up here you got to reach down and pull out and you have so many of us that are just scared to have the conversation about success, about what it looks like to actually have something, have a life for yourself, have a quality of life for yourself beyond anything else. But we have to be willing to sit down to have those tough conversations of what they look like. We in the gay community, I'll speak for myself, when I was younger, if it wasn't for sex education class, Sex, what talk about with me in the house? You don't have to know. Some come on the TV and then they go to turn your head, close your eyes. Like, them, them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have to go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I, no, I want to just say this. You know, when you're sitting, when you're talking about that, I, I really do believe that th there's a real not because i watch social media all the time it's, it's 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 my business to know what's happening so i know what to really talk about and inform my community about for pronoun tv and and to educate people that we we're building this company for a group of marginalized people and and we want our voices heard in real time and for Correct. us now what I'm not seeing on social media, I'm seeing the ministers, some of them, you know, the prominent ones, like you said, Joel Osteen and T.D. Um, T. Jakes, we see them all the time. But where are the Black doctors, the Black lawyers, 
the black airline pilots, the entrepreneurs, besides the celebrities, we already know they're successful because they're dancing, booty shaking, and doing all these things. And, you know, it's just normal for us to see celebrities. But we're not seeing important people in the black community, like I said, doctors and lawyers, airline pilots, that should be influencing the young gay community. Because I know quite a few black pilots, but you don't see them on social media talking about this is how I got here. This is how I got this job. This is what you need to do if you want to be a pilot or, or if you want to be a doctor. This is what you need to do. And for a lot of the black women who it, it's huge in the U.S. that they are registered nurses and nurses aides, nurses practitioners, and they're not on social media teaching young girls about compassion and mainly from the black women who they who men in general feel like they're hostile or they're masculine and they have no compassion it, it, it it's really important for black women to get in front of these things and show black people in general that this is how we live and this is what we do stop getting on here with that angry mentality of of retaliation and instead of just getting on with we're going to educate you how I got to this position. And this hopefully will help you have a better life. And for our gay community, we need more than just intervention. We need to see successful people besides successful drag queens. Right. And I just, and, I just go ahead. And I really think that that is what we need to that needs to happen and i think you are a prime example of success and i see you just talking normal and and, and rationalizing things in a real way and in real time and i think that that's what the young people really need to see and and and, and you're doing a great job at the, I mean, you might not know you are, but a lot of people watch you. I'm sure you know they watch you from on the other side of the screen. Right. But you're doing a great job with that. So what do you think about the what I just said about the the, 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 the doctors and the lawyers and the. I believe that I know doctors, I know lawyers, I know six-figure entrepreneurs i know seven-figure entrepreneurs like i know a lot of people however again it's they're in a space of i don't want to attach my name to it i don't want to associate my name to or it may not even be my name they may be excuse me they may be putting their name on proper documentation to create those changes that we don't see However, their presence is more so needed. And that's a lot of times what we don't have. We don't have the presence actually being there. And it's sometimes people just don't want to associate themselves with that. I always think back to the, the 70s. I, I think about like the 60s and the 70s. Back in the 60s and the 70s, or maybe even the early 80s. Back then when there were two-parent household. Back then when there were morals, values, and beliefs that were instilled. Back then when there was tradition that was in place. Well, when I think about that from the Black community, you have to look at it. I look at it at on a, on a, I really look at it on an 85-15 type of scale. And what I mean by that is 85% of the time, the man was not in the home because he was out working. He was out working. But while he was out working, he also was in the environment to where he was continuously put down or always saw the white man being the one that was excelling. And that made that black man feel less than. So when that black man comes back home, he only has 10% to give, really just 5% to give to his wife, 5% to give to his kids. And the other 5%, he's still trying to figure himself out. But during that time period that that man is not there, that woman is in the house 100% of the time taking care of those children. While she's there, the words that she's saying, the emotions that she's feeling, the invalidation that's going on there, that's what the children are perceiving and repeating as they're getting older in life. 
So when you look at them from, from that perspective, now, okay, you're born in the 70s, you're born in the 80s, okay, it's the early 90s, it's 2000, and we have all of these men that aren't showing up because they come from those home of women with broken hearts that didn't get the validity that they needed in their relationship, but they stayed. As, as many of them did, because when you go back to the 40s and the 30s of their parents and their grandparents, they stayed, they did it, that's what they know. We're at a generation and a time now to where we know, yes, people do need people, but we know that, hey, I can do bad by myself, or I can do even better when I have someone that's equally yoked with me to be able to grow and progress. But when you remove, when you remove one of those people from it all together, when you get into the 90s and the 2000s, and then you have a lot of single women, single black women raising kids because the men are being killed or prison or in prison, which is free free labor, so to say. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at those types of things and you get into, okay, well, who are raising these kids? Well, the mama can't do it because she's on Section 8, she's on welfare, she's on food stamps, she's doing this, that, and the third. The streets do it. And every so often, I'm not, I have friends that grew up in the projects that are doing great right now in their life. I'm not saying that it's anything like that. Ultimately, we all get to an age to where we have to make the decision on what we want, the quality of life that we want for ourselves. I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been on the side of the fence to where all I had to do was wake up in the morning and make my bed because everything was already done. I've also been on the other side of the fence to where I didn't have lights in my house for almost two years. I didn't have hot water for two and a half years. I was going to go to the white man, filling up the bucket with water just to flush my damn toilet. I've, I've, I've lived both sides of it. And in those dark moments, I understood that I need to have a better quality of life for myself. And what does that look like? How do I get there? If I stay here in Sanford, Florida, the only thing I see for me is either working for the school system or working at a call center. I didn't see anything else for my future. Did I know that I was going to go off and get into property management? Absolutely not. Did I know that this was going to be my career path? Absolutely not. Did I know that I was going to start a small business at one point in time and sell peanuts and start having conversation about young LGBT youth entrepreneurship in Sanford, Florida, after the Trayvon Martin situation, advocating and going to these different places, speaking in front of city hall members? No, I did not. But I knew if I stayed in Sanford, Florida, that none of what I have done would have been available for me. Is it scary? Mm -hmm. Is it hard? Yes, absolutely. It is scary to leave from your familiarity. But the thing about it is that familiarity breeds distrust. And you have mm -hmm. to be willing to get out of the environment that you're in in order to actually excel in life. And I don't believe that, again, back to your, your, your question, I don't believe that it has anything to do with certain individuals not being there. I just believe that they don't want their presence necessarily affected by what's going on. They're, people need people. So they're not just out there being doctors and being successful on their own. They have their colleagues of doctors and, and things like that that they're working on. I have, a, I have a, a very good friend of mine that owns a very successful salon back in Florida. And I'm like, I never, she was like, I don't talk about the, the bikes that I donate. I don't talk about the money that I invest to, into the church. I don't talk about, you know, the, the, the stuff that I'm writing off on my taxes, that big ticket item. I don't talk about that stuff. You don't, when you do stuff from your heart, you don't talk about what you're doing. It's not a, it's not, it's not a pissing party in terms of caring for someone or caring for a community or caring for a, 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 an environment. Like it, 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 you don't have to because it shows. And whether you know it, they know it, whoever know it, I do believe that we we have those people that are in our community because they are the doctors that are taking care of us. They are the doctors that are coming in and having those conversations about, hey, where are your stats at? Hey, have you done this? Hey, have you done that? Now, what does that look like outside of their professional environment? I don't know, but they're there because they're doing their jobs and it's what they enjoy. They, they have, to, by law, do no harm by law, they have to do their job in terms of making sure that they're having the conversation beyond anything else. So I do, but I, it's, it's a double-sided situation. I understand what, what you're saying. You want more representation actually visible in the community, but the community don't create those environments really for it to be said or had. You're better off having that conversation at a free HIV testing van on the side of the road than you are saying, okay, or, or a doctor saying, a doctor taking their time and saying, okay, well, I'm going to have this event and invite everybody out to have a conversation about 
this for free on my time, on my own dollar, whatever. It'll be a tax write-off, but whatever. You don't have that. That's not happening. Pilots aren't doing that because it, people look for an opportunity to bring somebody, tear somebody down. I've seen it myself personally just on my social media because I am so vocal about my life that I have people that talk negatively about me. And I'm like, have we ever sat down together like at a table a, with dinner? Like, have you ever actually come over to my home? Like, have we? If, no, I saw you out and about. OK. OK. <laughs> like. Well, you know, <laughs> well, you know, Tiana, you know, you're amazing to talk to. And I'm glad I'm getting the chance. Like I said, cheers. And um, <laughs> to talk to you directly and get your views about a lot of things and that how, you know, your how your mind works is very interesting that you you're talking on point. You're, you're 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 answering a lot of the questions that I was I'm actually thinking, you know, and I'm glad that you know we're having this open conversation as Black people, and um, we need to, like you said, we need to see a lot more of this because you're seeing the young people in front of the camera. Of course, they're putting on the makeup, which is cool and everything, but at the end of the day, they have to make a living in some form or another and and so they need to be doing more than just putting makeup on unless you're opening up a school or you teach you you know you know you, you have a long-term goal for doing makeup which right. is a competitive business when you think about you trying to start a makeup business and 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 get rich or have a decent living or you trying to do whatever it is that you maybe not passionate about. You just you see other people doing it. I'm gonna do it, and and I think I can do it better than that person. But yet it's not your passion. So somewhere down the line you're gonna give up, right? Because usually people with passion about anything that they're doing and, and keep pursuing it all the time has a bigger goal and a bigger picture for something that they want right. and that they're really striving for. This is why I when, when I thought about television, I used to tell people many years ago when I first started.